Fox News Podcasts presents the Brett Bear Podcast. Common ground. There are a number of senators on the Republican side that continue to want to find common ground. We emphasize the conflict and, and controversy sells. And I think it's a problem because most Americans look at Washington and see something that's broken. Why don't we look for ways that we celebrate what this country is capable of doing? It's amazing what you can do when you get off social media and you start talking and communicating with one another because there is common ground. With Fox News chief political anchor Brett Baer. It's time for our Common Ground segment where we look at to search for bipartisan solutions to the nation's problems. Tonight we'll talk about the border a little bit and artificial intelligence. Joining us are two congressmen from California leading a new task force on AI, Republican Jay Obernolte and Democrat Ted Lieu. Uh, Congressman, thanks for being here. I just want to start briefly on the border since we had the former president and the president down there on the border. Uh, Congressman Lou, you know, the president saw... Uh, this one area, and if you look at the percentages, uh, the, the crisis has kind of shifted there on the border uh, from Texas to California to Arizona. The place that he was is actually down 23 percent and not a lot of uh, border crossings at, at, per day there. Do you think the president got a full view of the border? And, and do you think there's a possibility at some kind of compromise considering where things are legislatively? Uh, thank you, Brett, for your question. I'm pleased that President Biden went to the border. I visited a border last year, and you are correct. Uh, different border communities do experience different effects. I support comprehensive immigration reform. I believe our immigration system is broken and needs to be fixed. The Senate uh, had a bipartisan package. Unfortunately, they were not able to pass it. I will work on a bipartisan basis in the House, and hopefully we can get something done in the House. Uh, Congressman Obernolte, any any hope, considering, you know, there's an effort to put H.R. 2 back in the mix here? Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I, I also hope that we can reach a bipartisan solution to the border. Uh, this is an existential crisis for our country. And unfortunately, it's something that I think uh, it could be easily solved. Uh, in particular, I hope when President Biden was at the border that the Customs and Border Patrol told him what they told us several months ago, which is that he could reduce the flow of immigrants by 70 percent just by reinstituting the policy of Remain in Mexico. It worked in the past. It could work again. We'll continue to work in Congress at Solutions, but the executive branch can do something right now to fix it. We've got our drone teams uh, in Texas and California with the live picks there. I want to turn now uh, to artificial intelligence. Take a listen. We need to put some sort of guardrails in place that's going to promote speech, not censorship, but also make sure we have a diversity of viewpoints that are flourishing and people don't get a skewed one side of view of history uh, or current events. Uh, and just this past week, you had the Google CEO essentially apologizing in a memo to employees. I want to address the recent issues with problematic text, image responses in the Gemini app, formerly Bard. I know that some of its responses have offended our users and shown bias. To be clear, that's completely unacceptable and we got it wrong. H how can Congress get involved in this process with AI? Congressman Obernolte, first to you. Well, I think Congress has a very important role to play in establishing a regulatory framework for AI, and that is the purpose of the task force that Congressman Liu and I have been asked to chair. So we'll be working over the next few months to establish a guiding principles document that we'll release before the end of the year to establish uh, that, that kind of framework and uh, as kind of a to-do list. Uh, for future Congresses to work off of. You've highlighted an extremely important issue, which is the spread of mis- and disinformation through AI. That's something that we are also very concerned about and something that we're going to be working to solve. Congressman Liu. Uh, thank you, Brett, for your question. I want to, first of all, thank Speaker Johnson and Leader Jeffries for establishing the Bipartisan House Task Force on AI. I'm very honored to co-lead it with my friend and colleague, Congressman Obernolte, and I completely agree with what Jay just said. We have to have some principles on how we're going to look at AI. And this is such a vast issue because AI is everywhere. It's largely benefited society, but it could also cause us harm. And we want to have a regulatory structure where we allow AI to innovate while reducing the risks of foreseeable harm. We'll continue right after this. 
you know, I, Congressman Olber Nolte, I know you've studied this and you've, it's kind of been in your past, uh, and AI is um, something that everybody's learning about as time goes here. Uh, New York Times said this, China's rush to dominate AI comes with a twist. It depends on U.S. technology. China now lags the United States in a generative AI by at least a year and may be falling further behind, according to more than a dozen tech industry insiders, leading engineers, setting the stage for a new phase in the cutthroat technological competition between the two nations. I think the going bet, Congressman Olborn Nolte, was that China was kicking our butt, but it turns out that maybe it's the other way around. Well, several years ago, in 2017, China made a uh, international promise that it would be the worldwide leader in AI by the year 2030. And they have invested huge resources in making that uh, a reality. So uh, I think that we need to focus on the areas that we are falling behind. One of them is in the education of our students. China several years ago passed the US in the number of PhDs it was awarding in computer science. This year it's likely they will award double the number that we do. Last year, the U.S. awarded about 800,000 four-year degrees in the STEM fields. Last year, China awarded over 3 million. So this is something that we absolutely can't ignore. If we don't do a better job of educating uh, our youth and equipping them with the tools that they need to succeed in an AI-powered future, then we are going to lose this race to China. Uh, last thing, Congressman Liu, for all those people that say uh, this stuff is not happening because it's too partisan up there, uh, you guys disagree on a lot, uh, but there's stuff happening. I believe we can achieve bipartisan consensus on a number of these issues. AI is not a person, it's not sentient, it is a tool. And a tool can be used for good and bad things, but it's also nonpartisan. And I liken this to cybersecurity. We've done a lot of bipartisan laws on cybersecurity. This seems to be something that's similar. It's technology. Yeah. There's nothing that's necessarily partisan about this. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Uh, please encourage more of your colleagues to do the same. Thanks a lot. Listen ad-free with a Fox News Podcast Plus subscription on Apple Podcasts. And Amazon Prime members can listen to this show ad-free on the Amazon Music app.